All right, so now we want to get to the full-on critical buckling load equation. And really, one of the things that we haven't considered are the effects of support types or boundary conditions on the column. Because when I change the boundary conditions from pin-pinned to, let's say, fixed-fixed, you know, I would suspect that the critical load that it takes to buckle the column would change. In this pin-pin column that I used to derive the critical load equation, the length of the column was this, was this L. And the buckled length was all the way from zero or node to node, from zero to zero, boom, like this. And essentially, the entire length of my column buckled. This is the buckled length. And I'm gonna call this L sub E, the effective length that buckles. And the relationship between this effective or this buckled length with the original length of the column was that this LE having pin pin supports was equal to one times L. This one is a factor. This one is a factor, which we call the symbol K. This K is called the effective length factor. It gives you a sense of how much of the length of the column will actually buckle. And for a pin-pin column, K equals 1. If I have a fixed-fixed column, the buckle shape will look something like this. And from inflection point to inflection point, L sub E is about 0.5. And that would suggest that K for a fixed, fixed column is 0.5. Here are the other ones that you might want to consider, pin and fixed. And here, in this case, the buckled shape looks like this, and this length is equal to 0.7 L, and that would tell us the effective length factor is 0.7. And if you have like a fixed, like a cantilever, a fixed and free end, you know, that would look like this. And this buckled shape would look like this and really you got to go from node to node if you will and this entire buckled length would have to be continued this is my effective length and the relationship between the two the effective length is two times l and that would say for a cantilever column or a fixed and free column this k value would be 2.0 in theory now the members that frame into the tops and bottoms or how it connects, you know, there's something in between this theoretical and there are ways to, to, to estimate those based on the stiffnesses of the members that are framing into a column. But nonetheless, for now, this is good enough for a first course in mechanics and materials. And what this means is that when we derive this Euler buckling equation right here, we assume this ended up that K was equal to one. And really, that equation should have a K in front of each of these L's, such that our final equations should look like this. And I'm going to highlight this with like purple, you know what I'm saying, so I can make it pop. Bam! And this is our critical load and critical stress equations. And this KL over R is interesting. It's an important variable. It's a great thing to know. This KL over R is what we call the slenderness ratio. All right, hopefully that was a good introduction to column buckling. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Take it easy. Structure